Hello. Well, today, continuing on with the Christopher Nolan uh, filmography, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about Inception, one of his most acclaimed movies. Um, you know, people truly enjoy this movie. They really love it. I do too. Um, for some people, it's they think it's this is his best film he's ever made, you know, either excluding like the Dark Knight films or including them. Um, this is often ranked <clears throat> very highly uh, um, in the filmography of Christopher Nolan, and um, not hard to see why. Um, this movie took a, apparently a, Christopher Nolan envisioned uh, this movie in various ways. Uh, it took him like 10 years to make it, and uh, at one point he thought of it to be kind of a horror movie. And, uh, that would be an interesting uh, <clears throat> way to see this movie, um, if it was a horror film. Um, you know, going into people's dreams stealing secrets that are valuable and which is what uh, DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio's character does for a living pretty much um, uh, you know he's hired by uh, Ken Watanabe's character to go and uh, Kenny Murphy's dream uh, to plant something in his head so that um, uh, they can extract something because like uh, or put an idea in his head actually usually they extract various information so they try to do that before but but him Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the case of Killian Murphy, they wanted to plant this idea in his head that will basically allow uh, Ken Watanabe's character's business to be thriving and because Killian Murphy's father uh, is the head of a company and he passed away and he doesn't want any kind of problems. Just wants his company to thrive better, and yeah, uh, DiCaprio's character is uh, in a way he's like he's like tormented. Uh, uh, he, his wife died, and uh, as the movie goes on, we find out he, in a way, it's his fault because he planted something. In the in idea of her mind that the only way to get out of a dream and to prove it's all fine is to kill yourself because when you die in a dream you'll just wake up. Um, and uh, they were doing this Inception stuff for quite some time that she didn't know what was reality and what wasn't. Um, and so then she killed herself and actually, you know, it died. She wasn't just, she wasn't dreaming. Um, and, um, there's a whole bunch of things in this film you have to pay attention with particularly with the last half of the movie when they're going into all these different dreams. You really need to pay attention because we're in dream one, then dream two, and three, and then at some point we go to a fourth level, which is limbo. Well, once we get there, and even in the others, it goes back and forth between like limbo, and then we're back to dream two, and then dream one, Limbo, Dream 3, Dream 1, Limbo, Dream 2, Dream 3, Dream 1, 
limbo, kind of, basically kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and um, it's quite interesting. Um, this is a film that I don't know what I can really truly say that hasn't been said about this movie. So much that has been talked about it, about it, and. Um, Quite frankly, from here on out, I'm, if these videos are shorter, that's kind of why, because, you know, Batman Begins onward, really, people um, kind of discuss these films in length. I even have, with the Dark Knight trilogy and even Dunkirk, I talk about those movies a lot. Um, but outside of that basic plot, you know, there is the ending, you know, it's ambiguous, purposefully, and um, everybody has diff different thoughts on the ending of the film. You know, I'm not going to tell you exactly what all happens on the off chance you haven't seen this movie. Though, again, if I have, though if you have seen it, there's probably no point in me even mentioning the ending because everybody has knows what it is but if, if you're somebody who hasn't seen this movie you haven't seen Inception okay I'm not gonna spoil it but again with the whole thing of dreams and knowing this and that well you know um, there's basically a top and um everybody has to totems um, basically there's something unique to them which only you the person having the totem can know about. Like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is in this movie, his character has a loaded die. He knows exactly how much it weighs, and he can't let anybody else have it or touch it or, or hold it, not have it, just hold it, because then it defeats the whole purpose, and they would know exactly how heavy it is. But DiCaprio's character, he has a top. If it's in a dream, it keeps spinning. Over and over and over again, until it just topples over. If it's in the real world, it'll topple over. Blah. Man, tongue tied. If it's in, a, it's in a dream, it'll keep spinning forever. It won't stop. But if it's in the real world, it'll topple over. Like a normal top would. And, um later find out that that totem was actually his uh, wife's totem. He took that and um, she keeps coming up in the dreams they're in. Like for whatever reason she keeps popping up. It's like in his subconscious. He likes to just, he feels so guilty, she keeps emerging. He feels guilty with what happened, um, and understandably so. Um, but, yeah, um, instead of DiCaprio, Joseph Will Levitt, the film as Marion Cotillard, plays his wife, uh, DiCaprio's wife. Ellen Page is in this film. Killian Murphy, I mentioned. Tom Berenger, um, Ken Watanabe, as well, and Michael Caine as uh, DiCaprio's uh, uh, father-in-law. And uh, he's in the film for like a total of like three minutes. Continuing on his tradition of being in every Nolan film since Batman Begins. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, another thing with the end, um, basically, you know, the whole thing is, is it, is it a dream? Is it not? Some people have theories supporting why it isn't. Some why it is a dream. Um, you know, one I've seen frequently is, he has a wedding ring on his finger when he's in a dream. Because, you know, 
feels guilty and his wife often appears in these dreams because of his guilt and if you look closely on his left hand he has a wedding ring and in the real world he doesn't have it because you know, she's dead so you know he just eventually just stopped wearing it um, and if you look at the very end of the film at one point when you can see his left hand you can note you if you look closely you'll notice he has no you know finger on or a ring on this finger and some say that's good solid evidence others say it isn't um, I've seen theories for this and that as to why it is a dream why it's real life but so that would indicate since he didn't have a ring on that finger it's the real world also Michael Caine is at the very end so spoiler he does come back and instead of just being in one scene he comes back and Michael Caine himself said it's in the real world or anytime you see me it's the real world like Michael Caine is he never appears in the dreams is only there um, in the real world and I'm like you know that, that, that could make sense um, also why would Michael Caine why would he lie I don't know why he wouldn't um, maybe he knows something the rest of us don't like maybe Christopher Nolan told him something that he didn't really tell anyone else Nolan himself purposely has never told anybody the very end or like the ending. He basically has it. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, and uh, other thing, a component of this, he's trying to get home to his kids because of when he his wife killed herself, she was able to make it look like he killed her and um, she's convinced he's stuck in the dream world and she's trying to wake him up and things like that tend to indicate exactly that it is a the ending is a dream um, though I guess I have been getting into more spoiler territory but whatever I think most people have seen this film at this point. Um, but I apologize, very delayed spoiler alert. Um, but another thing is, so that was a, that's another plot point in this film. He's trying to get home to his kids. You know, like he fled America because of all that, and he's trying to get back. Ken Watanabe's character, he's able to get him in with, with no incident and um, as he um, sees his kids again before he sees them he uh, spins the top and then he leaves he doesn't pay attention to see what happened to the top and the camera moves to the top spinning and then it cuts to black and ends. Right before it has a chance to topple over or anything, it just ends. Hence why people obviously wonder if it's a dream or not. Um, some say the fact that he doesn't care about the uh, totem now kind of proves it is a dream because also we finally see the kids' faces when we didn't before. I think there were moments where we saw the um, <clears throat> kids, but never their faces. Um, and to some, that's evidence that it is a dream, because he he no longer cares about whether it's a dream or not. He's with his kids. That's all that matters. And um. 
though I will say, uh, if you look closely, um, it looks as if the top is wobbling a bit. I've watched it in the ring thing aside, because some, some people don't think that's a very valid argument. Um, but if you look carefully at the end, you can see that top begin to wobble as if it's going to, at some point, stop spinning. Um, in all the dream sequences, it, it never wobbled, or else I've never seen it wobble. Um, I've seen the movie uh, quite a deal of times, or many times, and I never saw it wobble. Unless I just have always blinked at the exact moment in the dream world that he spins the top and it wobbles a bit as if it's about to stop spinning then okay but I haven't I've never seen that happen um, personally I believe that he was in the real world he wasn't in a dream but um <clears throat> Very good film, uh, in my opinion. I love it. Um, and, um, yeah. The film got nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards. Nolan was nominated for Best, got nominated for Best Original Screenplay and Best Picture. He did not get nominated for Best Director for this. Many people say he was snubbed, and I agree with that because he got nominated for Best Director for pretty much all the other awards, but not this one. Or not the Academy Awards. It's just dumb. I feel that, uh,. I feel one th reason he, Christopher Nolan, for instance, doesn't get n nominated a lot for like best director or stuff or win any like major Academy Awards or even any other awards really is because uh, he makes popular movies. Um, and to uh, basically quote uh, George Lucas, they don't give out Academy Awards to popular movies. At least not anymore. Um, Lord of the Rings won every Oscar. It got nominated for the, the last one, including Best Picture and Director and Screenplay. So it can happen, but nowadays not so much. And unfortunately, Christopher Nolan has making movies in the days of uh, where, in terms of awards, uh, some of the most popular movies. The movies that people really enjoy, the people go and flock to the theaters to see over and over again, they don't really get major awards. They usually just get technical awards. Awards the average person doesn't really seem to care about. Um, but you know, I don't think uh, no one cares a whole lot because, you know, He has a dedicated fan base. Um, people enjoy his films. Uh, and yeah, I think that's probably more rewarding to him than uh, an Academy Award or a Golden Globe or a BAFTA or a Director's Guild Award. You know, he may uh, appreciate being nominated and if he wins any awards, He's probably thankful, but, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't think he makes movies to get awards, um, just because if he did, we'd probably see a lot more artistic movies or movies with a message of some kind coming from him, and he makes movies he finds 
interesting. Makes movies that are that are interest him, fascinate him, and hopefully will interest and fascinate the people who watch them. I'm somebody who enjoys all of his who has enjoyed all of the movies he's made. And, um, yeah. Uh, that's really all I have to say for this uh, particular um, uh, film. Inception is a great film. I feel it deserved Best Picture and Original Screenplay. Both, both awards went to uh, The King's Speech, which I have seen. And it is a good movie, but I wouldn't give best picture or screenplay uh, to those, to that film, or even best director. I feel all of those should have gone to Inception. Obviously, I'm biased, but you know, at least I am, at least I can admit it. I can admit I'm biased. Um, So many people say they're not, when clearly they are, from just how they talk about something. So yeah, that's uh, really what I think about Inception. Um, do you enjoy this movie? Do you not? Do you think it's Christopher Nolan's best works? Do you think it's one of his least impressive works, or is it somewhere in the middle for you? I enjoy it. Um, yeah. I don't know exactly where I would rank it. Um, maybe my third favorite movie from him. Perhaps. Um, yeah, I haven't really thought about it a whole lot, but I enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. I'll stop rambling now. Hope you all have a good day and have a good week. See you next time.